What's going on, YouTube? I'm Slick, that's Slick Jackson, and if you're looking for the coolest, grooviest content on the side, well, you've come to the right place. So this video's gonna feel a little disconnected because I'm honestly just kind of rambling on with no end goal in mind, so let's just get it over with. Some of you might not know this, but I actually keep up to date with the various discourses revolving around tabletop gaming. I browse forums, image boards, and yes, Twitter. In completely unrelated news, my doctor just prescribed me anti depressants. I kid, I kid. But really though, I've come to find that tabletop discourse on Twitter is, it's awful, it's painful. You know, Twitter's got this feature where you can follow topics, right? Video games, sports, and yes, tabletop. When I made my account, I saw tabletop gaming being a topic that you could follow, along with board games, Warhammer, Dungeons and Dragons, and a lot of other things. Now these are of course things that interest me, so I followed them. But instead of getting cool bits of news regarding the tabletop medium, or people showing off the cool miniatures they spent hours was painting, instead I get posts like, oh, support your local marginalized tabletop publisher, right? And it's like, well, I might, but when all they make are games like Thirsty Sword Lesbians, well, that just don't appeal to me, drop it slick. You're gonna make enough people mad with this video already. And of course, I get posts like the ones we're about to look over now. I want to show you this picture here and tell me, what do you see? Alright, it looks to be some sort of fantasy race. Perhaps they look a little bit like, and they kind of look like monkeys with wings perhaps. Now, do you suppose this is some sort of racist caricature? What's that? You don't? Well, congratulations, you're normal. To be honest, I didn't even know this was a race in Dungeons and Dragons until I saw this clown post about it. Is it okay for me to call the dragon game racist now because the Hazardy are freaking atrocious and the fact that this was released is unconscious and a bull? He attaches some screenshots of the D&D Beyond page that basically detail the race. Again, these are called Hazodies. They were mammals that were no bigger than the size of house cats, so they were, I suppose, non-sentient beings, I guess. Then an evil wizard came along, gave him some potion or whatever, made them into humanoid, and forced them to work for him. But then they were freed by some other wizards, where they then joined the other societies of the other species, where they take joy in doing simple labor and stuff. Uh, so hold on, hold on, let me get this straight. You saw this Dungeons and Dragons race that kind of looks like a monkey, whose lore includes being slaves for a brief while, and you interpret that as racism, uh, presumably against black people. The fact that you saw this, and your mind immediately shifted to, oh, that's racist. To be honest, I think that says more about you than the game. I mean, I look at this and I think, oh, well, that's just a mildly interesting fantasy race. Like, in order for you to make the connection between monkey people and, uh, you know, people of color, you'd have to actually be a racist. Now, I looked through the guy's profile to find that he is indeed a person of color, which I just think makes it even weirder. You saw this group of monkey people and you immediately thought of yourself. Like, what is wrong with you? Looks like Wizards of the Coast has excised the slavery stuff, the slavery is censored for some reason from the Hazardy lore on DND &D beyond already. Late, but great. Shouldn't have been there in the first place, but it's nice to know that they're quick to listen and make change. Shut up, you crybaby. Glad to see Wizards of the Coast made the change, but truly it shouldn't have been printed in its original state in the first place. Hopefully in the future they will actually hire and listen to sensitivity readers so that things like this don't keep happening. Yeah, that's right. Hire people to make sure man babies such as these won't get offended. You know what's funny? If they actually did this, they probably get paid more than the people who actually like produce the miniatures or print the books. You know, the people who actually make the product that people actually want to buy. The ones who are on the factory floor for 10 to 12 hours a day. They won't make as much money as the blue haired gender fluid with the gender studies degree analyzing each page up and down making sure there's nothing that could loosely be interpreted the wrong way. We truly live in a society, man. Honestly, this whole thing reminds me of the time when people were talking about the orcs. Remember that? When people complained that orcs were racist because they resembled black people, I guess. Their words, not mine. Now, that was something else because I've never seen the resemblance. When I saw an orc, I just saw an orc. The only time I've ever seen orcs compared to real life racists was when the liberals started doing it and started saying that it was a racist dog whistle based off of racist stereotypes. Now, I've heard the saying, man, it goes something like, if you keep hearing dog whistles, you are the dog. And I'm starting to understand it, man. If you're gonna say that the orcs are racist because you related them to a bunch of stereotypes, well, you're the one who noticed the similarities. What does that say about you, huh? All right, that's enough of that. Uh, race is a pretty crusty topic. I'll admit, I don't really like talking about it, but 
but I just thought it was interesting. Let's just talk about something else I found. The more I think about it, the more that I hate that the expected reward for clearing a dungeon in Dungeons and Dragons is gold, gems, and valuable art. You are effectively looting the lost artifacts and cultural items from a long dead kingdom whose peoples likely survive to this day. I'm gonna leave it at this. Finders keepers, losers weepers. Tell you what, if the survivors from this long dead kingdom wanted that treasure, they would have gone into the skeleton, kobold, goblin infested labyrinth themselves. Second of all, you are making up an imaginary problem for a literal imaginary game. Like, do you just sit in a room all day pondering, what tiny little thing can I get mad at next? It's not real, you think. It is quite literally a figment of your imagination. You know, I'm just imagining, like, I don't know, some adventurers in a dungeon. Oh, finally. We found the crystal that can destroy the uh, entire whole world. Good thing we found it before it fell into the wrong hands. And then this guy's all like, no, this ain't right. We're looting lost artifacts and cultural items from a lost kingdom or something like that. Oh man, you're right. We'll just have to leave it for some evil wizard to, to recover and use. Actually, that kind of reminds me, can't you be evil in Dungeons and Dragons? Wouldn't it make sense for an evil character to steal stuff? Honestly, I can think of a hundred different angles to rip this argument to shreds. While I'm talking about the tabletop, can I just say that I never got to deal with female space marines. Yeah, that's apparently a talking point these days. Like when the Horus Heresy rulebook came out and it reaffirmed that all space marines are guys, people were mad because it was transphobic and that it excludes women. And again, I never got to deal with female space marines. I don't get why we need them, because we got the sisters of battle. Like, think about it. Instead of lazily inserting females into the space marine chapters and not doing much else to change the face of the lore, there was an all-female section that got its own lore and characters. And today, it's one of the most tasteful representations of women in just about any medium. And yet, people want to turn a blind eye to them. I think it's downright disrespectful. You want more female representation, you got it. But it ain't the kind you want, so it don't count. You know, if you really want men and women to be equally represented, you can take your ass to the Imperial Guard. Good lord. You know, I kind of wonder about all these people who complain about the tabletop gaming hobby. Like, do they like it? Do they have fun with it? Do they derive enjoyment and fulfillment from it? Because when all they do is complain about trivial stuff, I just have to assume that they're miserable to just about any gaming session they go to. And you want to know what the funniest thing is? I browse a lot of wargaming discussions online, chief among them the traditional gaming board on 4chan. And I actually find it infinitely more fun, engaging, and interesting because they actually discuss the games. They actually discuss mechanics, lore, miniatures, and it's not just, oh, racism this, sexism that. There are social issues in the, you know, they actually sit down and have civil conversations about the world of tabletop gaming. I don't know, it's like I said, if you want to have any sort of fun in the tabletop gaming community, you gotta turn a blind eye to Twitter, man. Or at least not let a bunch of whack jobs ruin your enjoyment of your hobby. But that's all I've got for this stick. Now, you guys do old Jackie your favor and keep it groovy. Thank you. Thank you very much. God, my throat is stuffed.